Wales, it's four minutes past three. Win Evans with you until four on BBC Radio Wales, coming to you live from the Hay Festival, and we've saved the best till last. Brian May from Queen will be with me to talk about Victorian stereo cards. Not quite sure what it is, but I'm sure he will explain. Uh, plus, get in touch with your event still, 03700 100 110. Email win at bbc.co.uk or text me 81012. Sitting here with Brian May... Uh, while there's people outside, it's like being in the back of a car with a queen. <laughs> uh, right. Because you're just waving and they're just waving. Uh, Brian, we're going to talk to you in a minute, straight after this track. Often you can uh, introduce a track that involves a legend and then the legend is actually sat next to you. Now, I don't know if any of you have thought about 3D glasses, whether they were relatively new, but believe it or not, people have been using 3D glasses or looking at 3D images since the 19th century in France. They were called Diableries and uh, Dr. Brian May and uh, Denis Pel Pellerin have joined me now uh, to talk about this book. Hello, Wayne. Yes, we're here. We're here to talk about Diableries, the little French devils from the 1850s. Can you describe a Diablerie to us? Because I've seen them before, but I didn't have a clue what they were. They're very hard to describe, actually. They're stereo cards, so if you, if you see them in a stereoscope, you get the full 3D experience. But what you're looking at is models of a whole universe of satyrs and devils and Satan himself as viewed by 19th century France. It's, it's a, an amazing vision and something that really nobody's seen in the 21st century. Denis, yeah. is this something that you've always well, they had? Actually, this? Cl they actually clay um, models, tabletop clay models. Right. About the, the, the figures are about eight inches, eight inches uh, tall and, uh, and they were photographed with a stereoscope. And, and the, the, the most wonderful thing is that they were all destroyed. So if it were not for photography, we would, would not know about them. What, they destroyed the models uh, after yes, they made the actual them. figures, the models were destroyed, yes. Uh, or some, some, some of the figures were reused, but... Uh, Within most, the series, yeah. yeah. But it, it's actually hard to describe them, because when you have them in the stereoscope, they look very nice. You can, they're 3D, and it's yeah, like you can amazing. walk in and touch them. But if you hold them up to the light, all the colours come through, and the eyes come out and glow at you. It's very eerie experience. It's almost impossible to duplicate in the 21st century. They're, they're like postcards with the same image twice on the postcard kind of thing, that's isn't right. it? That's right, not quite the same image because that's what gives you a stereoscopic effect. Yeah, you have one image uh, for each eye. I don't know whether you uh, remember, but when you, when you were younger you used to have these uh, red master, cameras. Yes. Is, it's a similar thing to that, is it, would you say, or yeah, not? Well, stereo is the same, in the view master, the, you mean the view master yeah. viewers, yes, yes. Mm. It's the same, uh, yeah. the same uh, process, of course, but uh, yeah. these, are, these, these were on paper and they, they are much older because the view master was 1950s and, uh, and these are 1850s. Yeah. Are they satirical? Are they meant to be satirical in the way... A lot of are? them are, yes, very much, and very seditious, in fact. In fact, these people were risking getting put in prison because they were taking the mickey out of um, Napoleon III and the whole regime. So it's a very risky, rather dangerous business. It's funny, too. It's very funny, a lot of it. Uh, and some of it's religious and a little bit scary, but the overall effect is, is something quite unique you know you've got to see that and nobody has seen this in the 21st century until now and we have pretty much every diablery that was ever made in this book which you can experience wow. in its full 3d glory wow how did you two meet then well, I through, Diablery, is that through this yeah yeah, yeah. obviously there, there aren't many people in the world who are afflicted with being addicted to <laughs> <laughs> this kind of thing but you know once you get bitten it's incredible and i spent literally months and years of my life trying to restore the you know, first of all trying to find all the series and then trying to restore them and make it so that you can enjoy them to the full you know the full experience that the victorians had the fun part is that brian had most of the cards nearly all the cards and i had most of the information oh, about right, the cars. Okay. So we, we were, oh. you know, meant to be to, to meet. 
You were outbidding him on eBay or something like that for the car. No, no, I didn't actually have many cars, but I had. I was more interested in the research, the story behind the cards, and he had the cards, so that was uh, perfect. Yeah. Where do you buy the cards? How, how much are the cards to buy? Like, how, how much were the cards to buy? Have you been collecting them a long time? Well, there are a lot to buy now. Yes, I've been collecting them for probably 40 years or so, I suppose. Um, they were, well, they were like one and sixpence to buy at the time. It's hard to describe what that was. I mean, when I was a kid, one and sixpence would buy you, like, fish and chips. Yeah. But in those days, it was about a week's salary, so they were quite expensive. Even then? Yeah. 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 You had to be sort of middle class to afford yeah. them. But, of course, you could, you could swap them and share them, and it was a sort of drawing room experience, so that's... It was a kind of great social thing in Victorian times. So instead of sitting around and watching TV, you would sit around and share these beautiful stereo cards, and it was like you could you could walk into the into the stereo window, and you could be in in Egypt with the pyramids. You could go to China and see them planting rice, or you could see the diaboris, like a, a whole universe of of weirdness. <laughs> Denny, when Brian first got in touch with you uh, to kind of collaborate together, did you think it was a, a wind up? <laughs> Were you like, Brian, mate? Yeah, of course it is. Thanks no, very much. Actually, Bye. No. It, it happened uh, through emails, so no, no, I knew, yes, about, we, I knew about him, yes. Yeah, we'd heard of each other yeah. for quite oh, a while exactly. before we met, a long time before we met, actually. Exactly, we had yeah. the odd email, I thought, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> he's obviously French, so he probably knows something about what he's talking about. <laughs> Why only in France, then? Why didn't we do it over here? And... Yeah, that, that's very, very funny. Well, actually, the thing is, in France, we had censorship at the time, and I think that's, that's what uh, triggered the whole thing, because uh, they were a bit political, and they were so social and political satires. So uh, maybe because you didn't have satires, so you, you know, so censorship, sorry, so you, you didn't need them. But in France, well, France was a Catholic country, so the, the fear of the devil was yeah. stronger, probably, than in Britain. And, of course, we had these, uh, all these... Uh, successions of uh, regi different regimes yeah, and uh, censorship all the time, so that's why. Um, um, looking at the book, right, it is the most beautiful book. Um, thank you. Will. And it, it comes in, the, in, the, in a beautiful case with, with some devils on the front. <laughs> yeah, uh, which, uh, Yeah, and you can see that it's almost French Revolution in its style, isn't it? You know, uh, uh, destruction and all of that. Oh, absolutely. The um, and and, the, and also, you've made these glasses. Is this your invention? This is my... Uh, yeah, I didn't invent the stereoscope. Charles no, Wheatstone no. did that in about 1843 or something. But I invented this particular version of it, which is collapsible and, and is focusable. And I think it's the only thing of its kind that you can really come across in, in, in the 21st century, which does the job. What would they have used back then, then? A proper stereoscope? They would have used, yes. Yeah, they were wooden, wooden stereoscopes. Mm. Beautifully made, mm. and you couldn't do it these days. You know. But this is moulded in... Uh, in, in uh, Sunbury upon Thames, actually, is a good English uh, piece of manufacturing. Yeah. It, is, it is an absolutely beautiful book with loads and loads of images and absolutely stacks of information about it. Um, a labour of love, though. Totally. Definitely. Yes, you couldn't do it any other way. <laughs> yes, we will never make a profit on this book. <laughs> but I've collected this there for over 40 years, and I did the research for over 18 years. Wow. Well, yeah. to, to come, you know, to, well. to get a book. Yeah. It, it is incredible, though, isn't it? Are you, are you immensely proud of it when you look at it and you think, oh, that's come together Actually, beautifully? Yeah, I f it's a sort of dream come true for both of us, I think, you know, to be able to bring this and share this with people these days, because it, it's an experience you don't get these days. You can go to the cinema and see 3D films, but this is a little different. It's a very immersive experience, and... Uh, Something very precious, I think. So we're very proud, yeah, very proud yeah. of the book. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, is it available everywhere? Yes, absolutely. All, all the good bookshops? All the good bookshops, even Amazon, I hear. No, really? <laughs> really. Ah, oh, uh, there's, yeah. there's your plug for the day. <laughs> or the LSE website. Or the London Stereoscopic Company website, yes. LondonStereo.com is where you can find us. Right, LondonStereo.com. Yeah, or you can tweet at me at uh, Dr. Brian May, if you like. Yeah. <laughs> Doc, now, uh, Doctor... Uh, you studied at Imperial College. I did, indeed. Uh, a listener has been in touch, OK? Mm. Uh, perhaps you can... S this is a 40-year, or actually nearly a 50-year family feud. A 40-year family feud, right? Uh. Uh, Roger <laughs> Davis has been in touch with the show. He says that he's been telling his children, right, um, for the, since they were born, um, that he <laughs> was in Imperial College with Brian May between 65 and 68. You've never heard of him. And, they, ne <laughs> and they don't... <laughs> And I don't believe Roger, it. Roger, never heard of you. Ah, <laughs> oh, Roger. No, yeah. I'm joking, I'm joking. Of course, of course. <laughs> what a liar this man is. He's unbelievable. Roger, never heard of him. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> uh, brilliant. We go back. We go back to Imperial College. Well, I'm glad I went to Imperial College. Yeah, was it was it a fun time next door to the Royal College of Music? It was a tough time. Yeah, I never went in the Royal College of Music. It's funny, I ended up being a musician all my life. Never set foot in the Royal College of Music until years later. 
it's an odd thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. But you see, they don't teach you imp to improvise in the, in the music schools. No, and, no. And that's kind of what you need to, to be a musician in Yeah, it's true. It is true. Uh, music industry, uh, we'll, we'll just talk about the music for a minute. Music industry has changed a lot. Do you, think, you, do you think Queen would have found the same path or, or, oh, or would it have say. been different? It's very, I mean, as Freddie used to say, talent will out, you know, which applies to yourself as well. You know, <laughs> but, you know, it would have been a different path, but I think we would have got there, yeah, because I think we had something to offer. It was a rare combination. It was a, it was a sort of m magical... Um, it's something that you felt was meant to be, you know. I don't know quite how it happened that the four of us came together, but it was certainly something very unusual, which you couldn't manufacture. Yeah. Uh, Favourite uh, song of all time that, you re that you've recorded? Oh, dear, it's different. Every time somebody asks me, it's a different reply. I, I think my favourite at the moment is Made in Heaven, which is a track which was never a single, but it's the sort of title track of the, the album we made after Freddie was gone with all the pieces that were left to it, which, again, I'm very proud of. And I've just been doing something very similar because we found a few more tracks. We were just talking about yeah. this, weren't we? Um, with Freddie singing and all of us playing, and they're quite beautiful. So people will be hearing this work um, uh, towards the end of the year. We're going to put out an album which probably is called Queen Forever, and it's a compilation, but it will have this new material on which nobody in the world has ever heard, and I think people will really enjoy it. What's it like? Can you describe it to us? Well, it comes, most of it comes from the 80s when we were in full flight. Um, so it's, it's quite emotional. You know, it's the big, big ballad and the big, big kind of epic sound. Uh, it wouldn't have been if we hadn't done this sort of restoration job on it because you have to start from scratch with it because we only had scraps. But knowing how it would have happened if we'd finished it, then you know, I can sit there and, and make it happen with modern technology. And we have Pro Tools these days. So you can do almost anything in Pro Tools. Do you feel like a historian now? Because you've, you've obviously like done an this book. And uh, <laughs> uh, you're just putting together old stuff. Yeah, I was terrible at history at school. I was <laughs> bottom in history at school. It's my eternal shame because I liked history, but I was obviously crap at it. <laughs> and this, I remember this history master who I quite liked coming over to me and saying, Brian, I'm so sorry, but you know, I'm so disappointed in you because <laughs> you've come last in the ex current history exam. But I love it. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's, you have to understand history to understand the present day. Denny, were, were you a massive? You can you can be honest. Were you a massive Queen fan? Well, I, I, I love Queen songs, yeah. but not, I, I've never look. been a fan of anybody. But uh, actually, All right, Brian, I'm a fan, yeah, I'm stay a fan back, of, stay back. Don't hit him yet. Yeah. I'm a fan of the man. Yeah, I'm the man because Brown is probably the, the what one, one what? of the last gentlemen in the world oh. and the last Victorian probably as well. Yeah. What do you like to work with? Gentle. Yes. Wonderful. I mean, uh, this is a dream job for me. I bet it is. For him, yes, and oh, working with him, yeah, him. really. Fantastic. Know, he's the well, like kindest likewise. person I've ever met. Oh, and he's brilliant yeah. as well. I mean, he can do everything. Uh, Brian, uh, I've got to mention the hair, because it's become your trademark, oh. really. Um, do you wish you'd gone for a shorter version that hadn't been so hard to maintain over the years? It's not really hard to maintain. It just does its thing, really. <laughs> no, I just, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm a, I've still got some, which is nice. <laughs> um, it, I'm now a silver fox instead of a, a red fox. No, I wasn't a red fox, was I? I was, I was a black fox. <laughs> but um, I'm quite happy being as a silver fox. Yeah, hey, yeah pretty foxy. Pretty foxy you think so? you don't mind me you saying think so? You fancy me? There's not many people who could get away with <laughs> pinstripe trousers and night trainers. Oh, no. That, that's bold. That's pretty bold. Yeah, I was always kind of anti-fashion, you know. <laughs> um, what's it like uh, being a rock legend? Um, and then your wife went on Strictly. Are you a good dancer? Ah, oh, I am the worst dancer in the whole world. You know, you did not want to see me dance. <laughs> yeah, Denise is worse. Yeah, no, no, I, uh, I'm, I am the worst dancer. You're the worst dancer. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, uh, I, I was immensely proud of her because she put fantastic amount of work in and did a brilliant job. And I think she was actually underestimated on there. She's a natural dancer, and yeah. I think in another lifetime she would have been a dancer because everything she does is like dance, really. But the, the funny thing about Strictly Come Dancing is that you have to do these formal things, which are not necessarily what dancing is about to everyone. You know, same as music. You know, you can read notes and you can read produce stuff you know but the the real music is in the human stuff which comes out of you instinctively yeah. and that's what anita's got as a dancer so i was well proud of my missus yeah uh, but do you dad like do you dance like a dad like the rest I of us i don't dance believe me i do not dance do <laughs> not just sit and watch. <laughs> yeah i can tap my foot and i can play guitar that's about it um you <laughs> you are 
known, I think, as one of the brainiest people that's ever been a rock musician. Would you think that? Really? Would you say that was fair? Really, oh, I don't know. I you don't are. Know, you're it? a doctor. You you do the science. You're into I the do ability, different you do stuff. Everything. Yes, I'm a polymath, aren't I? Apparently. Yeah. Well, I have to. For some reason, my brain wants to work in all different directions, and sometimes it's a problem. It's a problem finding time, and I tend to not sleep ever. But I enjoy life because there's so many challenges in, in different areas. With the book, um, what, what, what will happen next? Is there any more pictures to write about? Or oh. no. There is one more. One more. There is one missing gallery. When we wrote the book, there were two. We found one at the beginning of the year. And now there's just one more left. Just yes. So we're appealing to people. to, if, if you see the book, you know, find out what we're talking about. And if you ever find this card, we would be so grateful. What's it look like? We don't know. We don't know exactly. <laughs> we'll have oh. little skeletons in it. Probably have the devil in How do you know there's one missing then? Well, most of them are numbered. Not oh, okay. all of them, but a lot of them are. And uh, we're missing number EH10, I believe. <laughs> no, EH10 we found. Oh, we, we found that we one. Found, yeah, we, we, we what are we missing? missing? Number, uh, what, F, F, uh, is it 12 or 10? Yeah. Have you become 12. obsessed with finding this, uh, finding this missing card? Well, not Come on, really. be honest. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's kind of yeah, nice to have yeah, a little exactly. open end here, yeah. because you don't want it to be all tied up. You no. want there still to be mysteries. And believe me, there's a lot of mysteries left in the Diablois. Really? Mm. Yeah, a lot of mysteries. Yeah, we can't solve every problem. Because we're now 150 years away, so That's I mean, right. Denis's been fantastic dealing yeah, with it. Some of the clues, you know, it's a very cold track, so <laughs> some of the clues have disappeared. And uh, what was evident at the time, uh, what, what made people laugh and everything, it, it was difficult to find out uh, 150 years yeah. later because uh, we didn't know, nobody knew, and nobody had a clue. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I suppose it's not the most popular thing that people know what you're talking about. Mm. Do, you know, do you know what I mean when you say, I'm Very looking for a Diablo? Uh, yeah. Really? No, a few more now, because the yeah, book's done quite right. well, but yeah. really, no, most people look quite baffled when you first begin. Mm -hmm. You have to show, you can't really talk about it, you have to see yeah. the book, you have to see the mm. pictures in 3D, and then you go, oh, wow. Yeah. And when now we get the wow, we know we yeah. got there. Yeah. Um, being a, a, a rock god, um, is it like <laughs> this everywhere you go, uh, in the back of a caravan, and all of a sudden there's like 300 people standing outside? Oh, we've got an audience, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, oh, we have. We've got quite a crowd. Yeah. Give them a wave, well, give us a wave. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, not everywhere. No, I mean, it's, um, I, it's rather nice to see a lot of young people at Hay, isn't it? Because I think oh, last, yeah. um, last couple of times I was here, it was more, the, you know, middle-aged people like myself. Um, what do you make of uh, what, what do you make of Wales? Do you love Wales? Oh God, I love Wales. Yeah. Oh my God. Of course you love Wales. Wales are doing the right things about badgers as well. Wales are defeating TB in farming by vaccination. You know, which is the way England ought to be going. But sadly, we're not. We're killing, slaughtering thousands of badgers in a useless attempt to sort of control it the old-fashioned way by exterminating wildlife. So I spend a lot of my time now trying to save, trying to give wild animals a voice. Uh, and you've written a song about it. Badger, so Wales Badger, got Badger. it right. So I just, just so, you know, you, you've got Christiane Glossop who's heading a vaccination campaign. I'll stop dribbling on about this. No, thing. no, the song. Badger, the Badger, song, Badger, 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 Badger. Ah, yes. Well, I sort of, yeah. This comes from Weeble. Yeah, this is a fantastic internet sensation, Mr. Weeble, and I wrote this song with him. No, actually, he wrote it. <laughs> Badger, 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 Badger. He wrote that, but we did an adaptation for it. Brilliant. So, um, um, we will rock you. Has become a, a, a yeah. massive sensation. Yeah. Might there be a follow-up? We are working on a sequel, yes. In fact, we've already very secretly and quietly uh, workshopped it, uh, which means you stand it up yep. you know, you get people to sing it and act it. And everybody loved it, so we're looking for a theatre and we hope to have a sequel out there at some point. And more than this, I cannot say. Really? <laughs> but um, it's great. It, I think it it's, great, yes. it's kind of wicked. It's, it's very naughty. It's a little naughtier than the first one. And so. that was a bit naughty. In it's places. fairly naughty. Well, you got Ben Elton <laughs> right in it. You know. Is Ben Elton <laughs> going to be involved in the new one? Absolutely. Yeah, he's written it. Yeah, he's, he's the key man. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we collaborate. We are brothers. Me and Ben are brothers. Um, if, um, if you had to pick up one performance of all the performances you ever did over the years, uh, which would it be? Would it be Wembley? I think it would have to be on the roof at Buckingham Palace, really, because right, you yeah. can't get away from no. that. You know, there is no, nothing will ever kind of top that. You know, that, that was a life-changing moment, and yeah. How, it was, how, 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 right, let's just talk the physics of it, right, first. Yeah, how how yes. did you get up there? How would you get on the roof at Buckingham Palace? It's not as easy as you might think, actually, because we went in the lift the first time, and the lift wouldn't get to the roof. They, they said, oh, we thought it would go, but it stuck before it got through. So then we went all the way down again, and then you got lots of steps, and then you got fire escapes, and finally you get on the roof, yeah. But actually pulling it off on the roof is another matter, and no one had ever done that at that time. 
So it was an, an exercise in solving technical problems, but also in facing fear, because I could forever have been the guy who messed it up on, on the roof of Buckingham, Buckingham Palace. Palace. You know, and to wake up the next day and realise that I'd done it and it worked was amazing. Was it actually live? I mean, were you oh, actually totally, playing the guitar? Totally, utterly live. It had to be, because I couldn't be the man who mimed on top of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> you never know. You know some you people never do, you know. I mean, I'm not going to get into it, but, you know, no, I insisted it had to be totally live and, and the orchestra was live too with dear old Michael Kamen who's gone now but of course I was a hundred yards away from the orchestra so it was very difficult for us to be in sync we had to evolve ways of we had a TV screen we had monitors I had a huge set of monitors for the orchestra so I could hear them yeah. blasting out and I had big amps and I could hear myself blasting out it was adrenaline rush yeah, very beyond well. belief and it's an image that'll stay with us forever. Thank Great. you Thank so you. much, both of you, Denis you. Pellerin, you. and of course, Doctor Lord Brian May. Um, <laughs> Not a lord. Yeah, it's coming. I don't it's think coming. Make me a lord. No, no, no. We, we, we can do it. In, we can do it in Wales. I can do anything. Fabulous. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And, Bless uh, you. Thank good you. Good luck with the book, and it's beautiful. Okay, let's get to music.